Okay. Now, it says here, first row, with wrong side of last round facing, join yarn with a single crochet in, in center stitch of 15th shell before last slip stitch, including shell with slip stitch. So, before last slip stitch, so we want to go this way. No, we're turning. We're turning, and we're going to go including shell with slip stitch. So you do need to turn. Reason being, do you see, this is how you can tell which side is your wrong side and which side is your right side. Do you see the original nine double, or treble crochet we worked? That is what the right side of the stitches look like. When you turn it over and they look more squiggly, that is the wrong side. That is the right side where it looks more smooth and rounded, more squiggly, wrong side. So we definitely, this is where we joined, we definitely need to now turn to where the wrong side is facing. You can see my stitches are more squiggly. Here, let me get that up here for you. Squigglies. So now we're gonna count. Let me get a stitch marker here. Okay, one, because it said before the slip stitch. Since we were working this way, this is what before is. So now that we're turned around, we're gonna go this way. We're gonna count the shell that the slip stitch is in, because that's what it says to do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. I'm gonna mark that center stitch while I get my hook and everything. Well, if I can get it in a center stitch, there we go. Okay. Get myself together here. Of course, I like to leave nice long tails. All right, center stitch, we're going to join Oh, that's why it wouldn't go in because the stitch was turned. Okay, we're gonna join and I believe we're gonna work a single crochet. Yeah, single crochet. So chain one, work a sink, that's my microwave, <laughs> work a single crochet. And then it says to work a shell in the next single crochet and then, I'll just hold it up here so I can see it better. Okay, and here we go. Shell and next single crochet. One single crochet in center of next shell. Repeat from here 19 times. Do not work across the remaining patterns. Chain four and turn. There are 20 shells with one single crochet between the shells one single crochet at beginning and end of the row. So we're gonna end with a single crochet. So we're looking for 20 shells. Here's our starting single crochet. We're gonna end with a single crochet. So let's make 20 shells total across this portion here. Then once we make our, our last single crochet, sneeze, when we make one, when we make our last single crochet, so we're gonna make like a shell, then we're gonna make a single crochet to secure it. That's when we're gonna chain four and turn off the top of that single crochet. So let's just do that. So that is one, and you know what I'm gonna do just to make life a little easier on myself? I'm gonna count, this is one, count 20, count 20 single crochets over, because one single crochet, between the shells represents a shell. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So this is where my last shell will be worked, and this is where my last slip or my last single crochet will be worked. So that way I don't have to worry about counting them. I can just work. And that's nice. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to go ahead and work these 20 shells and I will be right back.
So this one's gonna be worked much the same, but a little different. We're gonna start off with one additional treble into our single crochet here so that we have a half shell, essentially. Now go ahead and work your regular shell pattern all the way across, ending with two trebles into the last single crochet right here. Instead of a full shell, just end with two trebles. Then chain one and turn. So come on back when you get down here. So again, we're working our regular stitch pattern. Only thing that's different is we're starting off with two trebles instead of three, and we're gonna end with two trebles instead of three. Other than that, it's the regular stitch pattern. So come on back and we will work the second round, and then it's just gonna be a repeat of these two rounds for a determined a length. I haven't read that far yet. Okay, so come on back when you get to the other end. Okay, here we go. I've worked my last single. So now I'm gonna work my last two trebles into the top of our starting single crochet. Now we will chain one and turn and work a single into the top of your last treble made and then start working your shell pattern as normal. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that just cause I like to see the finish line. <laughs> oh, um, just a moment, I'll twist it up. Okay, just start working your shell pattern as usual and you're gonna end with a single crochet into the top of your last treble. Then you're going to chain four and turn, work two trebles into the top of that single and carry on just like what we did in this first round. So we're gonna repeat this first round and the second round. They're calling it rounds two and three for some reason, row two and three. So we're gonna repeat these two rows over and over for how long? Repeat the last two rows alternately until front measures approximately five and a half inches from separation, ending with a second row. So we're gonna end on the row where we have the two trebles. And we're going to work up five and a half inches from the point of the separation. So here you can see the point of the separation. Just run your measuring tape along up there. And once you've reached five and a half inches, what does it say to do? It doesn't. It says that the poncho will be completed Poncho, when completed, will measure approximately 24 inches from beginning. Now, here's how we change the size. If longer or shorter length is desired, repeat last two rows more or less times until front measures two and a half inches less than length desired, ending with a second row. So you can go an additional two and a half inches or come pull it back an additional, or pull it back two and a half inches so you're only working like three inches. Um, and then make sure that you end on the row that starts that has the two trebles. Okay, so let's just keep working these two rows over and over again until you have either three inches or five and a half inches, or seven and a half inches if you want it to be longer and wider and bigger. So that is how you change the size. So, okay, that is our homework and I will see you whenever I am at five and a half inches from the separation. Okay, I am at my, actually, I didn't make it to five and a half inches. I made it to five inches because the pattern says that we have to end on the row where we start and begin, where we, <laughs> where we begin and end with our two treble crochets. So I think half an inch, it's gonna be fine. It's not even gonna be noticed. So now we're gonna start working on the points. Now, I think this is optional. If you don't want the points, then um, maybe work, I don't know, like three or four more rows of this, or you can work the points. So here is how we work the points. Chain one and turn. Slip stitch into your very first treble crochet. 
and then into the single crochet over, make a shell. Now make a total of five shells across. Two and <laughs> The yarn flows like butter, but the moment I start recording, it wants to act up. Work your single crochet. So just work five shells across. So come on back whenever you have five shells. After you have made five, two, three, four, five shells, go ahead and work a slip stitch into the middle shell of the next shell over, the middle stitch of the next shell over. So don't work a single crochet, work a slip stitch. I'll be right back. Okay, worked my last shell. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the next shell over. Now every row is going to be worked this way until you have created a point and you only have one shell at the top. It's very easy. At the end of every row, you're going to chain two and turn. Slip stitch into the middle stitch of your first shell and then just start working your shells. And then you're gonna slip stitch into the middle stitch of your last shell. Then you're gonna chain two, turn, and repeat. Slip stitch into the second stitch over, middle stitch, over and over again. So now we're gonna work four shells, then it will be three shells, then two, then one. So I will show you how we move up a row just one more time because it's very easy and I think you guys probably already have it, but I just like to be thorough. So I will be right back. I'm gonna work four shells. Okay, worked my four shells. One, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the middle treble of the last shell. Chain two, turn and slip stitch into the middle shell, middle stitch of the shell. Sorry, I keep saying middle shell. Forgive, forgive. Okay, now we're gonna work three shells. So I will be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and finish working this whole point. You're gonna work three shells, chain two, turn, slip stitch, work two shells, then one shell. So I will be right back. Okay, there we go. First point is done. Ended with one shell. There you go. Now we're just going to go ahead and cut. And we're going to do this again. Okay. So the way we're going to start every point, we are going to make four points that go across this front portion that we have been working on. Okay. Well, the way we're gonna start every point is into, just count right here. We wanna count five shells over, one, two, three, four, five. So this is the end of the first row of our five shells that we made to start our first point. So right here, where the shell meets, that's where we're gonna join, where the shell meets the shell just below it. Right there, into that middle stitch of the shell just below it. Go ahead and join, and of course, I'm gonna just weave in all of my ends whenever I jump off of camera here. I'm pretty confident with my work. I'm not gonna to have to undo any of it and fix anything, so I'm just gonna weave in all these ends, and I'm gonna weave in all the ends of my pineapple, and of course, my pineapple, my points. And of course, we're going to have two ends to weave in on each point because our starting and our ending. So, chain one. So since we are starting this next point into the middle stitch of our next shell, I'm gonna count this as a slip stitch. So I'm just gonna yarn over twice and start making my first shell right off the jump. And so this is how we're going to do every single point. Two. And three. So I'm going to make five of these and I will be right back. I will get this one started for you and then after that just finish making all four points. Okay, so I now have one, two, three, four, and five. Work a slip stitch 
into the middle treble of the next shell over, chain two, turn, and just do everything we did with the first point. Into the middle stitch, we work a slip stitch, yarn over twice and start making our shells. Okay, so make your four points across the bottom, weave in all of your ends, and then come on back and we will work the back portion of this, which I assume is gonna be worked exactly like this portion. It's just gonna be more stitches back and forth because it's bigger. Then we will do the turtleneck. Okay. Okay, got all of my points done. Let's go ahead and work on the arm and back section portion, which I think is all the same. It's all one piece. So I already marked where we need to rejoin our yarn. So you can see I have it folded right here at the point of our last point made. And then you're just going to down here where they join, skip this first single crochet right here and in the first shell just past or just in front of the first single crochet, that middle stitch right there where we usually work our singles, that's where we're gonna join with a single. This is going to be worked up pretty much exactly how we did this portion, but we're going to decrease one stitch. So we can do that together and then I will leave you to do the rest because it's all exactly the same. You're gonna work up the same amount of inches. I'm gonna work up five inches and then you're gonna work your points exactly the same way we did before. None of that is different. Uh, other than I think we're gonna have eight points. Let me just look really quick. Right here, uh, having eight points across lower edge. So you'll be working four extra points, but they work up so fast, don't they? They really, really do. And I've just been weaving in my ends as I go at this point because I'm pretty confident with my work so I don't have to worry about leaving my ends loose. Pretty confident, this thing is almost done and so that's just what I've been doing. Okay, so I'm going to join, work my slip stitch, come back down here, work a single crochet. That's gonna start us off and then we just start working our shells. Work your shells until you have made 40 of them, which is going to leave you with all the way over here. Okay, now, where is my other end? <laughs> there it is. It's going to leave you with two full shells unworked, but we're going to work a single crochet decrease to bring those two shells together so that we have 40 shells all the way up. Actually, it's going to be 40 shells, then 39 shells, then 40 shells, then 39 sh shells, you know, but but our base shell count needs to be 40. So the pattern pretty much tells us that we're going to have to do a single crochet decrease in this section right here to keep our 40 shell count. And that's the only difference between this and the front portion that we worked. It's really that easy. So, okay, I'm gonna work my 40 shells and I have just got this hair. <laughs> Every time I move it, it finds its way back. I'm gonna work my 40 shells until within two unworked full shells. Then I will be back. Okay, worked my way over. I now have, here is my, my front portion here. I now have these two shells left unworked. So let's work a single crochet decrease. So into the middle stitch, go into the stitch and pull up a loop. Then into the next shells, center stitch over, go in and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on the hook and pull through all three. Now, just like we did in the front panel, we're gonna chain four, turn, and work only one additional treble crochet because just like on the front panel, we're gonna only work half shells um, whenever we are on a shell row at the beginning and the end. So, and again, just like on the front panel, every other row will be a single crochet row and every other row will be a half shell row. And you'll just do this. I mean, you can just count how many rows you worked here and then just work that many so you don't have to worry about your measuring tape. So yeah, you're gonna do everything on this back panel just like you did on the front panel, including the points 
and you should remember how to do that. If not, you can rewind and go back and see how to do that, but it's very, very easy. And um, yeah, then just finish all of your points back here. You, you need eight of them again. Then come on back and we will work the turtleneck portion is what it has lined up for us next. There we go. Yes, so working the doing the points work same as points for lower front edge but work six more points so we're going to have eight points and then we're going to work the turtleneck then we're going to do some edging and of course edging is always optional it really is okay guys i will be right back <laughs> it'll be a little while but i will be right back for you and then we will start working on the turtleneck portion Okay, I am all done with all of my points and everything. Now we're gonna move on to the turtleneck portion. So this one's gonna be really, really easy. It's just a single crochet. So let's start, pretty much put your hook just about anywhere. I'm gonna put it off to the side. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start in the side. Pretty much any stitch. So, you know, we started off with a stitch count of 68 and that's what we're going to work is 68 single crochet so everywhere you see a chain stitch even if it's been used put a stitch in there a single crochet so i'm going to chain one get this out of your way and work a single crochet into the very first chain here and really any old chain will work just anywhere nowhere specific so here's another chain right next to it okay that's two and then I have a it's a little bit hard to tell what a chain and what it what what one isn't that's three four five six, seven, and eight. So obviously we're working on the bottom side of our starting foundation chain. And that's all you have to do is work 68 single crochet into every chain all around. And there you go. So I will be right back. So I worked my 68 stitches. Actually, it was 70, but I just went back and kind of, I knew where I had worked a couple of too many stitches. I wasn't quite sure about the chain. So 68. Um, now it wants us to slip stitch into the starting single crochet, chain one and turn, and keep working that uh, single crochet over and over and over again until we have six inches in height. I am going to choose to work in a continuous circle because I don't want a um, a seam and I just like the way it looks better. I feel like it's a nice, cleaner, neater look than alternating, going back and forth and turning. So the instructions are slip stitch, chain one, turn, work another round of single crochet and keep doing that over and over again. I am just going to work a single crochet right into my first single crochet and then I'm going to mark it as my starting single crochet. And so this is how I am going to work this. This is just my own personal choice and you can do this too. I just think it's gonna look better. So let's work a single crochet for six inches in height. So just keep working it round and round and round. So I will be back whenever I have six inches worked. Okay, six inches for the turtleneck is done. Now it wants us to work a reverse single crochet or a crab stitch. I've already slip stitched into my first single crochet. Chain one, let me get you down in here. All you have to do to work a reverse single crochet or also known as a crab stitch is just come back to the last single crochet you worked go in pull up a loop and then pull through two 
and then repeat. Come to the last stitch you just worked, pull up a loop, and pull through two. Make sure that your tension is not super tight or else this will get hard and annoying. But if you keep a nice loose tension, just like this, it'll be super easy. Also make sure that your loop on your hook isn't choked down super tight. Keep it kind of relaxed. Give yourself some room to stretch back. You see how far that is stretched out? Give yourself some room to stretch back. You can always tighten it up when you're, you know, while you're working. So come on back, pull up a loop, then pull through two. Pull up a loop, pull through two. And once you get the hang of it, you can go really fast with it. Just make sure that you keep that tension flowing, nice and loose and relaxed. So work this crab stitch all the way around. Come on back when you get back around to the beginning and we will close off this round together and then we're on our last leg of this pattern. We're gonna work the bottom trim if you want to. I always say trim is optional. Sometimes I don't like things to be bordered and lined and trimmed. Sometimes I like a natural raw edge. So it's gonna be entirely up to you. So come back whenever you're ready to close off this round and then we'll move on. Okay, let's close up this round. Here's how I like to close up. Whenever I work a crab stitch, I will actually skip the very last stitch, just skip right over it. And then if you look, if you turn, you see these two loops, right? Well, that is the last stitch right here. Here's our first crab stitch right here, right here. If you look up, you'll see two loops and that is where I'm going to slip stitch into backwards, just like this. So skipping over our last stitch, jumping over into our first stitch. And then I just work a slip stitch just like that. See, because a crab stitch is a, the way you work it kind of elongates it anyway. So you're not going to lose any length. You're not losing, it's not like you're reducing a stitch. It's just it's a long stitch that's stretching over the last stitch so that you don't get a lot of ugly bunching up right here. And then I'm just gonna cut and that's gonna be a terrible end to weave in. Look at that. What am I gonna do with that? I'll make it work, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, nice long tail. Oh, look at that, it's gonna be, that's gonna be a pain in my whole rear end. <laughs> But do you see how much cleaner and smoother it looks whenever you skip the last stitch? It doesn't look like we skipped anything at all, and that's because that crab stitch is kind of a long stitch. It's just a long stitch that's laid on its side. So there you go. Oh, that is gonna be annoying. Um, let's do the bottom edging, but first I wanna fold this turtleneck portion over and see how well it looks. Okay. Yay! Oh, look at that. It's working out. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. I like the crab stitch addition at the bottom. That does make a nice, nice look to it. It almost looks like a string of pearls down there. I'll show you closer so you see what I mean. It's kind of like pearled. It's pretty. It's real pretty. And this yarn is real pretty. It's got a nice, it's got a nice sheen to it. It's real pretty. Okay, so there is the turtleneck portion. Make that even. There's the turtleneck portion. Now let's look at what they want us to do for the finishing touch, the edging. So this is, this is the border edge, all of this down into here. Now the second round is just a round of the reverse single crochet. So when I, earlier whenever I said this, this pattern was a bit wordy, this is what I mean. You know, they basically, I mean, this is like, this is like a written tutorial. It's not just instructions. It's like a tutorial. It's simple. We're just going to put one single crochet evenly spaced along every edge. When we get to a point at the shell, we're going to work three single crochet into the point of the shell, into the middle stitch, and then carry on. They used all these words to basically say that. 
And I know I sound like I'm poking fun and maybe I am a little bit and that's probably unfair for me to do. So here we go. I'm just saying, sometimes less is more, you know? We're not writing a novel here where we have to be detailed and describe the feel of a breeze, the sound of a rustling tree in the wind, the way somebody's heaving chest might look as she's breathing as some of those books. It's just a pattern, you know? Calm down. <laughs> okay. Single crochet, so I'm going to join, work my first single. And since I'm working single crochets all the way across, I'm going to go ahead and bury half of my tail in. And then I'm going to take my darning needle and run those stitches across back the other way to lock them in. So that's how I'm going to do my tail on this one. So here we go. I wouldn't work these single crochets super tight as these stitches are kind of loose. So I would just have a light touch with these here. I'm gonna work two single crochet into these um, turning chain spaces, maybe even three. Yeah, three. Just because we don't want this to start cinching in. And that's if you wanna work the edge at all. And I think, I think a little bit more on this tail and then I'm gonna leave it to weave in the rest later and one more and that's enough tail for me to go back the other way to kind of lock it in you know serpentine it a little bit so I am working pretty loose because I don't want this edge to buckle in on itself keep your stitches loose let's see we'll put one here and then three into here One here, three here, pretty simple. I am keeping my work very loose. In fact, for this portion, if you struggle with a light tension, go up to a six millimeter hook. In fact, that's a good idea, just a moment. For sake of myself making sure I keep a nice loose stitch, I too am going to work with a six millimeter hook, a J six millimeter. I think that's just gonna be better all the way around that way. I don't accidentally. I, tep I typically keep kind of a moderate tension. It's not real tight, but it's also not real loose. So as I'm working, it could it could even get away from me. Look at that, it actually looks looser now. It looks better now with the six millimeter. So my, my strong recommendation is grab you a six millimeter hook. Three into here, one, two, and three, and that's enough tail. That's enough tail. Here we go. Three into, I'm gonna put three into all the turning chains. And when we get to the part, the port, where did that accent come from? When we get to a part where I have just regular stitches I can work into, I'm just gonna work into them like normal. Port. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you do that? Now I'm coming up to regular stitching here. So I'm gonna work, I'm just gonna work right into this space. One into the top of this treble, one into the top of this treble. And I'm gonna put two into here, one into the top of this treble Again, now we are at a point. We are at a tip. So let's see, how do you look? Yes. One into that, well, now that, that pulled it right on down in there, didn't it? So I'm just gonna work one right here. Oof. Yes, bend to my will. Okay, one right there. Now we're gonna put three into the center treble. That was my first treble I worked into, the center treble. Let's work three single crochet there. Two and three. And then 
we just work our way on down. And good morning, Merlin. <laughs> I'm going to put two right here. One, two. And then this is a regular stitch, so I'll put one here, put one here. Now, oh, what do we got? Okay, well, it looks like I have got more. I don't have any t more turning chains to work into, so now it looks like it's going to be all regular stitching in a way, because this area here I'm going to have to deal with, but yeah, it's okay. I'm just going to work a stitch right into it is what I'm going to do. Just don't want it to buckle. Hey, that looks pretty good. I definitely highly recommend 10 out of 10 dentist degree. Bump up to your six millimeter hook. I kind of feel like I worked too many stitches over here. See how that looks like it's bulging? I'm going to have to go back and fix that. So maybe just two. Well, I don't know, these three, you know what? It's gonna have to be sort of a, work it out the best way you see because these are fine with three stitches in it, but these don't like having three stitches in them. They're bulging out. So I am gonna fix that. I don't like the way it looks at all. So just work it as you see fit for the most part. Here we go. One right there. One, two. I'm going to put one right there, one in here, yeah, I don't want to jump too far. That looks so much better. Oh yes, that looks so much better. Okay, so just keep working this all the way around. Work it out the best you can to keep it as even as possible without any without any bulges out or any buckling in, you know what I mean? And then work a round of your crab stitch, just like we did for the turtleneck, if you don't want to, by all means don't. They do want you to do two rows of this, so then work two rows of single crochet. And then that's gonna be it. And as far as the two rows of single crochet, when you get to a point, I'd still work your three into the tip. I would still do that. Okay, uh, oh. You know what, on the crab stitch, they don't say to work three crab stitch into the same stitch. Interesting. Well, go ahead and work this all the way around. Whenever I come back, I will be done and I will have reveal shots for you, but surprise, surprise this time because it's something I can actually fit. Because as you know, I make everything to fit. Millie, I am going to be modeling this for you. A little fashion show for you. Okay, I'll be right back. I wanted to jump on here real quick and show you I'm currently working on my reverse single crochet as my final leg of this marathon. <laughs> I really love the way this is turning out. I wanted to show you what it looks like at the point. I just worked every stitch like normal and it's working out very well. Very, very well. I really like the way that this border looks. It's stunning. It's really beautiful. Let me get you in. I hope that's clear enough. It's really, really pretty. It's a really pretty border, but it's working out really, really well. I like it. Okay, I'm working my way down. Now, I just worked this part here where we have the two points kind of meet, and it, it caused, with this stitch, it caused it to bow out that way. So I'm thinking, skip a couple of stitches maybe to kind of keep that section shaped right. I don't know, work with me on this one. So here we go. And I'm thinking maybe skip these two inner stitches here. So I'll work this one. Then I will skip, skip, and in the third stitch over, let's see how that works out. Let me work a few more of these and then we'll see how it lays. Nope, nope, didn't do that last one right. There we go. Okay. That is so much better. So much better. Okay. Let me show you what it was doing before. Just so that you have an idea, you know, because they don't, 
They don't tell you how to do these things, but like any pattern, you can make alterations to it, make it work for you. And I think this is going to be best. So this is working every stitch. And you can see already it's wanting to flatten out this area. See how it's flattening it out already? So let me work my way up like I did before. There we go. And do you see it, it opens it up and whenever it, whenever you want it to hang down, you, the only way you can do that is by popping it up right here. So I think we just have to skip the two center stitches, you know? So yes, here we go. I'm gonna skip these two stitches right here. And I think, let me know in the comments what you think. I think it works better this way. Skip, skip, and in the third one over, just like I showed you before. And I think this is much, much better. See what I mean? It's not quite as opened up. It still has that nice, V shape and you don't have to do pucker it out to get it to fold in. It's just better in my opinion. There you go. In the description for where uh, the video you can make this purse somebody I don't know their name but here on YouTube but what do you guys think I love it